parallel is uh, in, in, in the laws of Plato, Plato is talking with uh, a Spartan and he's talking about the, uh, the idea of the symposium, the drinking party in Athens, which is apparently very common. In Sparta, it is not allowed. Now, what Plato or Socrates points out to the Spartan, or anyway, I should say, not Socrates or Plato, but it, it's called the Athenian stranger, which I believe is Plato, but anyway. The Athenian stranger points out to the Spartan that by having a symposium, one learns to deal with the effects of alcohol. And so, and in experiencing it, it can learn to control it. This is very important. For apparently the Spartans would leave and go to other city-states and be uncontrollable uh, because of, they were away from home. So, beauty is the same way. One must be exposed to it and its effects and learn to, to control oneself. Unlike there are some cultures that choose to cover their women up so that they cannot be seen by their men. And therefore, the men are not tempted. But the unfortunate problem with this is, is they never learn to really deal with that desire and that can lead to problems. All right. Um, it's another story by Xenophon, which is very interesting. It's in the memorabilia about Socrates. And uh, Socrates is doing his thing, talking with a couple of men, and um, a messenger comes over and says, oh, that there is this incredibly beautiful woman, Theodore. And um, everybody is just mesmerized by her beauty, and that Socrates must come and see her. Socrates takes a different approach here. He goes, he agrees. If she's that beautiful, he must go see her. So he goes, and they go to an artist's studio where Theodote is being painted. And he looks at her, and she is truly lovely. But then he engages her in conversation, and he comes to find out that she supports herself by the help of gentlemen or, or, or friends that uh, men who um, are attracted to her beauty. Now she doesn't do this with any plan. It just sort of happens and she goes along with it. And Socrates points out to her, you have a power and you can develop it and, and, and use it to your benefit more efficiently. He also hints that he knows a number of um, love spells that she could use. Or she's very interested in this. And so she's, she's now become very attracted to Socrates rather than the other way around. So she seeks him out. Now, he has become the beloved, not his physical body but his mind and what he offers, the, the, the knowledge that he offers her. Now, this transition from a beautiful body to a beautiful mind or a beautiful soul um, is quite well marked. In Plato's Theages and also Xenophon's Hero, we see the desire of the ambitious, uh, the tyrant or the would-be tyrant. And what Plato does is turn that desire from a desire for pleasure by ruling over people and controlling them to a desire to be honored by the people, a desire of the soul. And, and Xenophon also um, does the same thing with the the tyrant of Syracuse, hero. So, a word that becomes very important in this transition is kalos ke gethos, which means, it's, it's translated as gentleman, but it literally means the beautiful and the good. So, the, the good man must also become the beautiful. 
Nein.